This thing's moving pretty good. Oh boy, feels pretty nice. Here it comes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, guys, that is a tank. Oh my God, that thing is freaking huge. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to NB Edits. So today I am in northern Wisconsin and I'm going to be doing a little bit of walleye fishing. I know it is very surprising that I am up in northern Wisconsin and I'm doing walleye fishing, but the bite has been so incredibly hot lately that it's almost impossible for me to not get out here and do it for you. I'm bunkering behind my truck right now, as you guys can tell, because it is extremely windy. So now if I step out right out here, I don't know if you can hear me, but it is pretty windy out here and that's why I was kind of just hiding behind my truck. Now, when we do these walleye fishing videos, a lot of people in the comments ask us, how do we set up for walleyes? Where are we finding these walleyes? What we use for walleyes? In today's video, I really want to be specific on how we actually set up, rig up, and catch these walleyes. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I like to do it. Now, granted, we are up here in northern Wisconsin, but you can take these techniques and you can use them on any lakes that you guys fish because they work up here, so they're going to work down wherever the heck you guys are. So that's the goal for today's video is to show you guys the exact brand and the exact technique that I use to catch these walleyes and hopefully obviously I catch a bunch of walleyes in this video to show you guys kind of you know that it works and that you can listen to what I'm saying so what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm going to actually start drilling some holes I haven't been to the spot in a couple weeks it's actually been a little bit slow for me trying to get out on the water we've been really wrapped up with uh, you know doing booths and doing fishing shows with companies and all that good stuff plus up here in northern wisconsin we just got hit with you know some of the coldest weather that we've had in a very long time it was uh last couple days up into uh negative 50 negative 60 in some places for windshield temperatures so it was extremely cold and kind of uh held me off of the lake but i'm back out here today so i'm gonna start drilling and I will bring you guys along, show you exactly what I'm trying to find, and we're gonna see if we can catch some walleyes tonight. So stay tuned guys, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. All right, so the very first step when I get out onto the water, well actually before I even get out on the water, I like to look at a contour map before I even head out, just to get an idea of kind of what kind of structure there is in the lake that I'm gonna be hitting. So in this lake, it is pretty much just a giant bowl. Now there's not much structure, there is a deep hole over there and then there's a couple rock bars over here and there's some humps and then there's some weed edges. Now it sounds like a lot but this is an over thousand acre lake so that's really not that much structure for the size of the lake that we're dealing with today. But the spot that I drove out to right now, as you can tell I'm a little bit off of shore right now but that's because I found a hump. Now there's two different rock bars to the right and to the left of me those I'm not really too worried about. Right now, the fish are really on that weed edge. So that's exactly what this hump holds, is a nice weed edge. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm trying to find six to seven to eight feet of water. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start drilling out there in the deep, and then every five or 10 feet, I'm gonna drill a hole in until I find that water depth that I'm looking for, and also, after I'm done doing that, I'll show you guys what I like to do to try to find the weed edge, especially if you don't have an underwater camera. Like myself, I don't have an underwater camera, so I'll show you guys a little bit of uh, how I like to find the weed edge. I think you'll get a kick out of it, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start drilling some holes in and seeing if I can find that right depth that I'm looking for and that weed edge. So here we go. Well, let's hope this bad boy starts. It hasn't been started in a couple weeks. All right, it's not being my friend. There we go. All right. Well, since the last time I was out here, there was about I don't know, 14, 15 inches of ice. Now, ever since this cold snap, we're looking at over, I mean, there's gotta be, man, 25 inches of ice at least out here. 
Uh, it's been extremely cold, obviously, like I said, and it's really showing in the ice because uh, those three holes actually were kind of a workout for me. So now that I got some holes drilled, I'm gonna see if I can find that contour change in the depth, and then I'm gonna see if I can find those weeds. All right, so now that I got all of my holes drilled out, I think I'm on the weed edge, and I think I'm where my depth is. So I'm at the first hole right now. Now, when I'm trying to find these weed edges without my camera, you wanna make sure you're fishing some clear water, obviously, because you're gonna to have to look down the hole and see if there are any weeds. So, now if I am in the depth that I am looking for, which is about six to eight feet, I should be able to look down this hole and I should be able to see if there's weeds, no weeds, or if there's a mixture if I'm right on that break line, which is what I'm looking for. So basically all you guys do now is you just cover it. You wanna make sure that you cover your entire face in the hole, not in the water, because it's very cold out, but you wanna block out the light so that way you can see down. And in this hole right here, this has weeds. So what I'll do is I'll go to that hole right next to me and chances are that one will have no weeds or a mixture of both, which is exactly what I want. So that's how I like to try to see where I'm fishing and uh, kind of get you guys an insight on what we do here on NB Edis if you uh, don't have an underwater camera, which we do not have. But next year, we plan on getting that because this isn't a perfect method, but it's the way that we do it and it works up here because most of our lakes are very clear. All right, so what I've done now is I found that break line where it goes from weeds to no weeds. I drilled about halfway through and then what I did is I drilled right on the side of that break line so that way all three of my tip ups that I'm going to be setting up are right on that weed edge which is exactly where I want them. So now what I have to do next step is to put in my tip ups. So walk over to the vehicle right now. I got my tip ups set up already. So pretty standard guys. This is my beaver dam tip up. I'm sure 99% of people who hit out on the water going for walleyes are using a beaver dam tip up. It's the only brand that we like to use here on NB Edits. You can use other brands if you want. We just prefer the beaver dam because in our eyes it is the best tip up that you can use. Now what I got going on this beaver dam tip up is just some black tip up line. I think this is actually beaver dam. Uh, tip up line to be honest with you then I run that to a swivel and then I got about a three foot liter this is 20 pound fluorocarbon and then I'm running that to a size 8 gamagatsu hook now that is the way that I like to personally set for walleyes no I know a lot of people like to use a lot lighter fluorocarbon or sometimes people use braid but 20 pound for me has worked very good. I haven't noticed a difference in not getting bites. And I also know that it's gonna be strong enough to hold those bigger fish if I get the opportunity to catch them. So that's how I like to rig my tip ups. Now I'm gonna go set them up, show you guys kind of how to do that. To set up the tip up, it's fairly simple. Get your depth finder, drop it to the bottom. All right, hit his bottom, pinch off right where your tip up's gonna be laying measure out the width of where your spool is so that way because that's going in the water so you want to make sure that you're right at the right depth and then for walleyes I like to do anywhere from a foot and under a foot don't ever go over a foot unless there are weeds on the bottom and you want to be right above the weeds otherwise I try to stay below a foot I use a bobber this is only to mark my spot so if I get a tip up on this spot I don't have to constantly keep on checking the depth and resetting it so that way I know every time I get one I can just reel up to the bobber then I know that my depth is set exactly a foot or half a foot or whatever I set it at on the bottom so I can just reset it right away because when you're tip up fishing it tends to be quite cold out and you don't really want to be constantly checking depth and being out here as long as you can so that's kind of how I do it. Now the only thing I'd have to do is get a minnow on. I am using medium walleye suckers today and sending it down. And that's exactly how you do it. Now all I'm going to do is just wait for a flag and see if I can get some walleyes for you guys. Definitely a fish.
fish on here. I got to it and it was running. Set the hook, it was on there for just a second. It must have just had a hold of the minnow. But hey, that's a pretty good sign. That's first flag of the night for me. It's just beginning to get into walleye time. So that is a good sign. Next time though, I hope they swallow it so I can get to it. And there's a nice big fat walleye on. So I'm gonna get this back down and I'll see you guys at the next tip up. All right guys, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but I got a blinking red light. You know what that means? That means I got a tip up. Let's go check out and see if it's a big old walleye. Okay guys, so same tip up that I had last time. This thing's moving pretty good. Oh boy, feels pretty nice. Feels pretty nice guys. My hole's freezing up here. Yeah, this feels like a nice walleye. Really nice walleye. I'm not gonna try to horse it in. There's my bobber. Okay. Just gonna take my time with this one. Definitely feels like uh, a 25 plus, I would say. Just judging off of the weight. But, it's hard to say until we get it up. This, thing's, this fish has got a lot of fight in it. A lot of fight. Man, this feels like a heavy fish that just does not want to come up. Come on. Come on. I just need one fish tonight, guys. Just one. Come on. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. That is a tank. Oh my god, that thing is freaking huge! Oh my god, oh my god guys, that is definitely by far my biggest walleye of the year so far. That has got to be uh, a 7 pound plus fish at least. This thing is enormous. Man, I wish I had some other people out here to uh help me with this fish but this thing is just an absolute hog oh my god I'm not gonna spend too much time with it. I'm gonna get back in the hole here quick okay guys so I got my measuring tape out I'm gonna take this fish out for a quick second get a measurement on her this is a 28 and a half inch walleye oh, this is my personal best for northern Wisconsin this fish at 28 and a half inches probably weighs eight or nine pounds. This is a true giant. I can't even explain how awesome this is. I really wish Brandon was here with me, guys. But this is this is crazy. I can't even believe it. Here, let me turn my light off so you can get one more good look at this beauty. Oh my God, guys, this thing is a tank. Okay, I'm gonna get a release on it enough time. Here we go. So it is so cold out here, guys, that my light actually ended up dying that I had behind the camera. Luckily, I got my headlights so I can still see what I'm doing, but this fish is kicking a little bit, but not enough strength to uh, kick out of my hand. I like to keep them in the water until they kick out of your hand. That way you know that they had enough strength to kick away from you. So I'm still in the process of reviving this fish. It's, you know, it can take sometimes 30 seconds, or it could take 10 minutes. It doesn't matter how long you have to hold this fish in. Just make sure you hold them long enough until they swim away. I think this fish is ready to go. Oh. There he goes. That is absolutely fantastic. I can't even believe that I just caught my personal best. I mean, that is just, that's just freaking insane. Alrighty boys, look who decided to show up. Brando's here, we got Aaron here, we got Jake in here, obviously, they drove out. We just got up here. My buddy Mitch is with us as well tonight. Nick already got into a flipping giant, a giant walleye. So hopefully we get into a couple more here. Pretty excited for Nicky boy here. Got into a freaking PB, I'm excited. Out of all the years of fishing, got into a real nice one, honestly. That's gotta be his best one yet. So proud of you, buddy. But nice. we're gonna get into a couple more. Oh, 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 slow movement. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. Uh, no. It feels okay. Oh, there we 
you go. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Second walleye of the night. Definitely a lot smaller than the first one that I caught <laughs> by a long shot, but this is what I'm after today. And got another one. All right, guys, so we just made it back to the landing. We did not get any more flags after that last one with the guys. Overall, though, it was a pretty decent day for myself. I ended up catching my personal best walleye, which was something I wasn't actually expecting getting into today. But, you know, it, it just happened, and I enjoyed every moment of it. Too bad the guys came out after the fact that I caught it, but that's okay. I got to show them, you know, the videos and the pictures of it, so... That was pretty awesome. But I really hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit of how I catch my walleyes and how I like to rig up for them. Hopefully you thought that was very informative for you guys. So when you hit the water going for walleyes, it'll help you get on top of your personal best as you saw in tonight. Brandon and I will probably be hitting the water within the next couple weeks and we will be filming another giant tip up video. If you guys haven't seen that, we uploaded it last week been doing really good and we hope everybody has been enjoying that but like I said we will probably be doing another one but it won't be the same exact tip up it might be even a little bigger so you'll have to stay tuned and make sure you check back for whenever we upload that video thanks again for tuning in to today's video I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me catch my personal best walleye and getting a few tips if you enjoyed today's video please make sure to give it a thumbs up that shows us that you enjoyed the content that we're bringing you Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel because we will be uploading a bunch of more walleye fishing videos. Within the next month or so, we will be starting to get into the open water season down there on De Pere on the Fox River. So you have to stay tuned for that. And until next time, tight lines from NB Edits.